nations and your family and your children. Come on. And the children Every hand lifted up. Come on. And the Woo! Children receive it. Hey, receive it. Upon you. Shout out, receive it. Come on. Come on. Your family. Come on. Your children. Yeah, come on.
Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody thankful for God's amazing grace in your life? This is a good time to shout. This is a good time to clap. Amen. What a God, what a Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Good morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Sheila. Good morning, everyone. How amazing does it feel to be worshiping together in the presence of the Lord? Isn't it awesome? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. We just thank you. Just welcome. We're so grateful that you're here and watching online. We haven't forgot about you. So we're so grateful. We thank you for your faithfulness during this time. It's been, God has taught us so much, right? So much. And we're so grateful to just be here and worshiping together and with you at home because like the word went forth the other day that even though some of the doors are closed in the quote unquote church, we are the church. So we open up the doors of our mouth, we speak the word of God and that's what we focus on. So I'm just, I'm so grateful to be here. It's just awesome. It's so exciting. So praise God, Pastor. Amen. Gracie, Gracie, you gonna give everybody a kiss? Ma, amen. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. Say hi. Amen. Give him one more big kiss. One more big kiss. You want to give me? All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So once again, you guys, God bless you. And, um, and, and, to, everybody, and to everybody watching at home also, um, God bless you. Thank you for joining us again and, con um, and trusting us with the things of God. Amen. Last night as I was like, we had the service. It's been, it's been a while since we've had people, you know, so I've been speaking to the camera for two months straight. So there was people, of course, last night here at the church, and I was still looking at the camera in the beginning, and I'm like, and I'm like oh, there's people here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we, have a, we ha but we have an extended church family that's watching online, too. And I'm thinking, okay, I gotta still look at the camera and still the people here. And then, and then it's like, and then something rolls up in me. And, and what was it? I can do all things Amen. through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen. So we love you. And uh, again, want to say thank you to everybody for your 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 patience um, during this time and your faithfulness. Amen. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're come. We've actually um, have come out stronger than when we than we started. We've reached more people than ever before. God's hand truly has been upon this assignment, and to him be all the glory and all the honor. Amen. And um, so what we're going to do is, um, again, um, all the services are open, you know, as far as Saturday night at 6 o'clock at night, Sunday, of course, in the morning, 1030, Monday night prayer, thank you, Monday night prayer, um, 7 o'clock, so tomorrow, even though it's Memorial Day, uh, also, we're still going to be here praying, amen. We're not, we're, we're, we're pushing forward, Amen. This is, uh, we got to keep on praying. We, get, we need to keep on standing in the gap. Um, that's how things change, amen? That's how mountains are removed. So we'll be here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and then life groups uh, at Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pastor Sheldon, Tom, why don't you guys real quickly just give everyone a little, because we started the series this past Wednesday. So why don't you give them a little, a little, 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 um, a little, a, not, not a little, I like, I, I, I like, not a tray, I like a little something something. Praise God. It's good to see all of you guys. We missed you. Well, this week we're going to be talking about the story of the prodigal son from the prodigal son's point of view and what it took for him to come to the end of himself. And that, you know, we have to start to be honest with ourselves, we have to be honest with other people, and we have to be honest with God. Until we can do, can do that, then we're still going to stay lost. But when we can do that, then we become found. Amen? So I hope you'll all come Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Pastor Cheryl. Praise the Lord. So, and, and for, so as, we, as we're getting back um, um, to uh, open services and our life groups and our prayer meetings, what we're going to do is for the next couple weeks, we're just, just you know, as we're, 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 we're taking one step at a time, um, child care and children's ministry, we don't have, we're not going to have it here um, for the next couple weeks or so until we get more, um, so we can prepare better for that transition. Amen. 
Um, and then also our breakfast ministry on Sunday morning. This is great. This is an awesome turnout. Amen. This is really, this, this, this is a testimony of, uh, of, 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 of the soldiers that are in this church. Amen. And that um, truly that, you know, with everything that's happened and, and what's been going on, um, I, I really believed and, and believe that, like I said, we're going to come out stronger and more on fire, more committed, more, more focused, amen? And this lets me know that there is a focus um, on, th on the, the, the focus of why Jesus came and what this is all about. And uh, I really believe God's going to take this assignment to another level as a byproduct of it. I believe that with all my heart. And um, so we are going to, we're planning in the beginning of June, um, um, to reopen the breakfast ministry because it is a big part of our ministry. That's what we're all about, amen? So um, I'll be announcing the exact date, but it'll be the first half of June. So little by little, amen? So let's keep on letting people know that we're here. Let's get the word out. If you're watching online, let's share the, the, the service. Bring hope to somebody, amen? And as so many have and so many that have been impacted because of it, amen? So let's, uh, let's keep getting the word out. And again, I'll be, um, uh, I'll be giving an update as far as the breakfast ministry. So first half of June, um, probably we're looking maybe the second Sunday to start that off, you know, to, to kick it off. Um, and we'll be back on schedule as far as that goes. Amen. Um, what I want to do right now, hey, baby, praise the Lord. You got to say praise the Lord? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, what I want to do is we're going to take the offering right now. And what I want to do with the offering, we have it up here. Uh, uh, so when we, when we finish praying, we're going to continue to worship the Lord. And as we worship the Lord, as the Lord leads you with your tithes and offerings, you can just make your way up here and the buckets up here um, as we continue our, our worship and our giving. But I wanted to give you an update also um, as far as, um, as I said, during this stretch, we've been able to sow into um, um, multiple places for the work of the Lord. And one of the places, once again, is the orphanage, um, um, Fire and Water Orphanage in Uganda. So P Pastor George sent me a text message um, two days ago, and he goes, we're still on lockdown, but we've just, we're, just, we're, we're just getting back to work because everything was halted for a while. And um, so he goes, um, we're back at work, and we were able to send $7,000 for the, the continued work of the orphanage. Amen. Um, so, and, and like I said last night, uh, the integrity level is awesome. Every dollar that's being sent over, he's giving me a breakdown exactly where everything is being spent and how it's being spent. Amen. Praise God. So there's accountability. And of course, I've been there multiple times. Um, we have a great relationship. I'm planning at the end of the year, if everything works out, I'll be back in Uganda at the end of the year. Um, so I'll be stopping by there and just doing, you know, I'm going to, you know, you know how you go and do, do it. You know, you walk around and act like, you know, I don't know. Just praise the Lord. Okay. That looks good. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Uh, amen. So, so, but I say that so everyone that continues, because we need to continue, we're in the process of, 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 that's one building in the process of, I think, six that are going to go up, okay? And, um, and, 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 and this is going to be awesome, just, just as you look at that, now think about how many kids are going to be there and how many kids we're going to be able to um, 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 impart the word of God, raise them up in the things of God, education, and for them to move forward for the glory of God, amen? So, um, so... So there's, so I want to, again, um, there's follow-up. I know the area because we drove by it when we were talking about it on my last trip. So this is real. You know, because sometimes it's like, okay, you know, when you send it overseas, are they spending it? Are they using it for what, you know, we're sending? Yes, yes, and yes. And I'm on the ground with it following up and keeping, you know, making sure everything's going forward. So uh, um, there's, so they're working on the roof now. Keep going. So that's. And that's, and now there was only a trench for the bathrooms. Now they're starting to, those are the, the toilets that are going to be put in there. So they're working and they're starting to, so things are happening. Amen. Is there another picture? Praise the Lord. There's part of the roof. So that, that's what they started a couple days ago. So that's what they've been working on a couple days ago. Amen. So to God be the glory. So just a little update. Um, so we're moving forward and we're impacting not just our neighborhood, our city, our country, but on the other side of the world for the glory of God. So. Um, this is very, I know it's, as I say this, it's very dear to me, but I know it's very dear to all of us what, you know, the opportunity that God's given us to, to um, man, to, 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 to help these children, amen? And um, it's just, 
It's rewarding, amen? It's like, it's like it, 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 that, that gives you, like, you wake up in the morning with, like, okay, we're doing something here. So, and we know we're doing something, but we're really doing something, amen? That's, 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 that's significant, and it's changing lives. Praise the Lord. So, um, saying that, just continue to pray and watching online um, 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 for this project throughout the year as we keep moving forward. Um, just pray. And as God continues, as God speaks to you, all we would ask and I would ask here is just to continue to obey the Lord. And if God does speak to you on the project of the orphanage, that when you give, if you give online, if you, if you give here in person, that you just let us know that it's for the orphanage in Uganda. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, Pastor Tony, would you come and pray for the offering? And thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Praise God. Amen. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Give them a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so good to be home. Amen. So let's, uh, let's pray for the offering. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Once again, my God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my God. We just give you all the honor and all the glory that even when we're not faithful, you remain faithful. You stay faithful, my God. And we praise you and we worship you at this time. We ask you to bless these offerings, bless these tithes, my God. Oh, Lord, that souls will be connected to them, my God. Not only here, but on the other side of the world, my God. In Jesus' name, we praise you for them, my God. And bless the cheerful giver. Bless those that can give this morning. And those that cannot give, my God, we we pray that you bless them that at the next opportunity they would be able to give for your honor and for your glory we give you all praise in jesus mighty name amen, amen. and you know what i was thinking here you know i was just thinking about this do you realize that i was in uganda i got back at the end of the year last year right it was towards the end of the year yeah when was i in uganda was it was i in india first or huh okay i was in uganda in may and then India okay so uh, praise the Lord uh, when I came back I, I talked about we're gonna you know we're talking about purchasing property do you realize like within 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 a short time not even a year like less than a year we bought property in Uganda remember when we said we're gonna buy property and we're talking you know usually some of this stuff takes like you know and it's like not you know it's like okay what's going on what's going on do you realize that we bought property and you're seeing things go up within a half with within less than a half a year <laughs> what's that yes and my wife was saying and we and we were and sewing so during this time that you know, I, and I say this and I, again I'm not trying to, but really think about it and during a time when people are pulling back this church all of us we pushed forward amen praise the lord soldiers amen let's stand to our feet let's worship the lord and the altars are open for our giving
worship the Lord just for a few more merits here. Man, are you glad to be in church this morning? It's just something about being together physically. Amen. That something supernatural takes place. I mean, right now, don't you just, just already just like, oh. Do you, you feel it? I want to just, I want to say first of all real quick, and just thank you. Um, last night we have a crew that immediately after service went through this whole church um, to prepare for this morning. As we had mentioned on our Facebook, wipe down everything. I mean, they were, I, I, they were, they were, they were. I don't know if I saw it correctly like even in the kitchen where really no one was really in there I think they were wiping down the clock I saw it so um, I want to say thank you to the servants that stayed afterwards and um, and I mean it wasn't just like okay let's just get this done I mean this place was wiped down it was sanitized amen is that the word and um, so thank you for that and we're going to continue to be faithful to that amen and really uh, moving forward um, a year from now we'll keep on doing that because you know what that's just a good thing to do amen so that's a as we move forward so um, awesome you guys awesome 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 that blessed me last night to see that it wasn't um, just kind of like okay let's just really quickly go through this but they really put everything into it and made sure that this place was prepared for this morning. Amen. Um, I want to encourage everybody once again, please. This is a great opportunity. There's people right now that the walls have come down and their hearts are open where before there was walls up to the message. It's one of the greatest opportunities for evangelism like never before some people that you've talked to in the past if you talk to them again make that phone call invite them to church you don't be surprised they'll say you know what yeah i'm gonna come and join you today or i'll be there this weekend so i want to encourage you moving forward pray and and when god puts somebody on your heart invite them to church invite them to church um bring hope to somebody and um and I believe we're gonna, we're, people that did not respond in the past will be responding moving forward, amen? For His glory. Now, before we sing and worship, just for a few minutes, and we're gonna get into the Word. I just wanna set up the Word. I'm gonna follow up from last night. When we, when we, when a, the enemy attacks us, when we're going through something, an addiction, circumstances have been in, introduced into our lives when you when you're praying and seeking the lord for a breakthrough that process the enemy is working overtime to not allow you to get started because he's had you hostage for so long but then you come to church or you might be watching something on television and uh uh uh, uh a, 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 a service a church service and or you come to church and and then you have that moment where God just touches you you have that moment where you have an encounter with God and there's liberty and there's freedom and the chains break off your life and you know you feel it you know something just happened the enemy does not pull back afterwards actually that's when your guard needs to go up the greatest because it's after your breakthrough it's after your victory that the enemy comes in because usually at that point there's a tendency for us to relax because we start feeling a little bit better you had that encounter we pull back we relax we get comfortable and the enemy comes in and steals our victory I'm going to say that again. He steals our victory and we find ourselves back in that place again and sometimes even worse. 
in the next few minutes I want to talk to you today about protecting your victory so you can finish strong protecting your victory so you're not up down up down anybody know what I'm talking about because up down up down see if we want to see a move of God we need to start becoming consistent so in the mountaintop where we have a shout and a, and a smile that even when we go through a valley because things are going to happen life we can still keep our shout and our smile in the valley just as when we're on the mountaintop experience when we're when there's great blessing and there's and there's a great shout you can still keep your shout during the valley nothing changes so I want to talk to you today there's a title I would the title would be your focus becomes your destination your focus becomes your destination how to protect what God has done in that initial breakthrough that when you cried out to God when you came to the altar desperate hungry Lord if you don't touch me right now and do something right now I'm gonna lose my mind in that moment where God shows up and shows off on your behalf that moment where he flexes his muscle on your behalf how to protect that moment and not lose that moment and that encounter with God let's lift up our hands and let's worship him come on hallelujah
around you in the circumstances look onto me I'm working on your behalf and as you keep trusting me and keep doing the next right thing it's gonna set you up for the next right thing and the next right thing and eventually God's going to open up a door that no man can shut. Things are going to open up. Things are going to turn. And God says, the battle doesn't belong to you. The battle belongs to me. What I need from you is to keep on trusting me. Keep on following me. Keep running to me keep worshiping me keep thanking me for what i've done keep thanking me for what i'm doing and keep thanking me and give me all the glory and all the honor for what i'm about to do
before the Israelites were delivered out of Egypt God was already working on their behalf when they were still in bondage in Egypt God already had heard the cry of the people and God was raising up Moses with a message to Pharaoh let my people go so God already was working behind the scenes while they were still in their condition and God was already working they didn't see it but God was already at work God was already putting a plan together and organizing and for their deliverance and even when it got closer to the breakthrough it seemed like things were getting worse that God wasn't around it seemed more hopeless the closer they were getting to the breakthrough my God I'm someone someone needs to hear this the closer they came to their breakthrough and their breakout it got worse before it got better God was at work and after the tenth plague the people of Israel were set free and they marched out of you I'm here to tell you God is saying you're about to come out of some stuff stay in position stay in a place of victory because if you're in a place of victory you can't be in a place of defeat stay in position you're about to come out of some stuff and God's about to bring you into his will his plan his assignment for his glory lift up your hands and shout I receive it in Jesus name amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord boy we could just wrap it up right there huh you want to just shut it down you want me to sh I, what no you guys don't want more uh, you don't want more no you don't shut I want more amen well your focus your focus will become your destination your focus will become your destination I want to start off by saying and opening up with this the way we think about something the way we think about something frames the way we see it and how we act on it in life a good frame around a painted picture hanging on our walls will make the picture stand out true or false true or false I can't true or false don't be scared the same thing can apply to the picture we form with our thoughts about our life we hear a great message and we are really stirred up at that moment we experience a breakthrough our thoughts change and in and new perceptions or issues in our lives are formed but watch this and this is where I'm trying to get us to now but if there's no follow-through look at someone say there's got to be follow-through we can lose the breakthrough we can lose our victory if there's no follow-through here it is this is it this is this is this is this is where this is where the church people that love God I've been there before that sincerely believe in God have a cry for God no ifs ands or buts about it get victory in their lives but then they lose that victory and the church what happens is sincere people that really love God and hate 
that, that, that thing that they fall back into. It's not like, man, this is what I want to do and this is where I want to live. They hate it. They know it's not, it's not from God. They know that it's taking away their, their assignment, their purpose, their greatness. Uh, 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 you know, you know that, 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 that this thing is holding you hostage from the greatness that God's called you to. And what we have in the church, and this is where the church gets stuck, and this is why we don't see a great move of God, is because what happens is we become like a roller coaster. We're up, we're down. We're up, we're down. And a house divided can't stand. You and I, we, when we have that breakthrough in our lives, through the grace of God, and what I'm about to talk about here today, we can keep the victory. We can protect our victory. We can protect our breakthrough so we don't have to go back again. And you know when you go back again or you fall back into that thing, it's a lot harder to come back. And my wife says this, as she has celebrated over 15 years of being clean and sober, it's easier, watch this, it's easier to stay sober than to get sober. What, and what is it that helps us stay victorious and not try to have to get to and work towards getting another breakthrough. It's easier to stay sober than to get sober. And it starts with our mind, our thoughts, and what we allow into our thoughts, our mind, is the key to this whole thing. The really, there's, the, the, it's not that complicated. Sometimes we make it complicated, but the reality is it's very simple and if we have right thinking, then we have right living. Wrong thinking, wrong living. Right thinking, right living. So, watch this. We lose it because there's no follow through. And we lose the breakthrough. That is why we have two battles on every issue. Look at someone say two. One, to take ground and get free. The second is to hold that ground and stay free. The second battle is designed to establish the victory of the first one and prevents us from returning to our previous way of thinking and perceiving. We need to reframe our we need to reframe our thinking in line, watch me, in line with the mind of Christ. This is the key. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Watch this now. Verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is. Look at some say, there it is. The reason we're up and down, up and down is after we got the breakthrough, we don't follow through by staying consistent in the Word of God. We don't stay consistent in the Word of God. I'm not talking about just coming to church. I'm talking about going home, 
spending time in his word. The Bible says meditate on my word day and night and you will be like a tree planted by rivers of water and everything you do shall prosper. Psalm 1. That is God speaking. That is God's word. And God is not a man that he shall lie. If God says it, that settles it. If we believe it and we put action to it, then we will see the manifestation of his promise in our lives. So if God, God is saying, if you're in my word daily, every day, not a one time a week thing, every day, filling your mind with my word. And remember, whatever you meditate on eventually goes from the mind to the heart. And the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Everything you do shall prosper. In other words, the Hebrew, prosper, everything that is connected to you will eventually push forward. So wait a second. If we're not pushing forward, it doesn't mean we're not going to have trials. It doesn't mean we're not going to have tribulations. It doesn't mean we're not going to go through some valleys. But God is saying, if you are connected to me and you're spending time with me and you're in my word because my word gives you wisdom, guidance. And if you're in my word, eventually, when it's all said and down, done, that season, that trial, whatever that situation might be, when it's all said and done, you're going to come out on the other side victorious in a, at a higher place. You're going to come out. You're going you're gonna to move forward. Uh, we get stuck, though, when we disconnect. We come to church. We get our breakthrough. We get the victory. We start feeling a little bit better. And then all of a sudden, we read the word a little bit in the beginning. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. But then eventually, we start not, watch, not, not reading our word, not spending time with him. Now, the the fit, our schedules, then, then, then it's like, well, I don't got time for this because I got to go do this. So now things replace that time of us spending time in the Word. Or I'm tired. But before, when you were going through what you were going through, come on now, think about this. When you were desperate, when you were hurting, when you were ready to lose your mind, you never talked about a schedule. You never talked about being tired. Man, all you can think of is, man, I got to get to the house of the Lord. I need a breakthrough. I need a miracle. Whatever it takes. And when the worship was going on, hands lifted up. There's a cry to the Lord. The altar call. When the altar call was taking place, you're the first one running to the altar. Then God touches you. And then all of a sudden, weeks later, the things that did not hinder you before, all of a sudden, schedule, got to get up to work, can't make it to church. Oh, come on now. And the next thing you know, the victory you had, you've lost because you've lost the focus. And your focus is somewhere else, which eventually becomes your destination. How do we protect the victory? How do you protect your miracle? It's easier to stay sober than to get sober. This is something that is not secondary. This is on top of the list. Everything you do during the day should revolve around your time with the Lord first. Not the other way around. Spending time with him. Reading his word, his word, living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. His word going in, his word going out. Jesus going in, Jesus going out. Fox News going in, fear going out. Are we all right?
Whatever you're spending time, whatever your focus is, eventually is the thing that's going to dictate your next step. So if you're glued to the TV, for example, and you're watching CNN, Fox News, by the time you finish watching all the news all day long, you're locked in your room. And it's the end of the world. If you're in the Word of God, my next step is not being dictated by the system of the world. It's being dictated from God's Word, heaven's point of view. So my next step is not being dictated by man. It's not being dictated by people, it's not being dictated by the news. It's being dictated by what God says about me, who I am in Christ, and what God has for me and his promises. And when God says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, praise the Lord. God said it. I believed it. And there is breakthrough in that. There's peace in that. There's rest in that. And you don't pull back. You continue to move forward. For the glory of God. Are you with me? When we get ourselves into trouble is we get disconnected from the word. Because whatever you're spending time with, okay, you're receiving information. Okay, watch me. You're receiving information. Uh, as I said last night, I'm teaching right now. I didn't hear you. Well, I'm teaching. Whatever you're focused on, okay, if it's the new, you're receiving information. Information becomes your knowledge. Your knowledge becomes your understanding. <laughs> so whatever I'm glued to, whatever I'm focused on, it could be the news. It could be a program. It could, whatever you're reading becomes the information you're receiving. Then you get an understanding. Well, you get knowledge. You build knowledge from the information. Then the information becomes knowledge. Knowledge becomes understanding. It starts to become understanding. In other words, it becomes truth in your life. Oh, Jesus. And then the next step you take, you receive information, knowledge is gained, then you got an understanding, and then what happens next? Then your next step is dictated from what you've been meditating on. So for some, the news have become truth. But when you're in the Word of God, And that's your focus. No matter what anybody's saying, your next step is not dictated by what anybody has to say or the world. Your next step is the instructions that God's giving you. And when God gives you an instruction, then God's going to cover you and protect you and guide you and lead you. If I was to allow the world to dictate my next step on my trip to going overseas to India and Uganda last year, I would have never left the house. Yeah. When they go down the list and tell me all the different shots I need to take, and it's real, some of it's real. I took a few shots, and then they go, these are also recommended. And the recommended shots are like another 15 or 20 different things. God's put something in my heart. God's been speaking to me. India. And now we have a church in India. Okay, so Uganda. You need to go back to Uganda. You need to go back to Uganda. Well, Uganda, that place you're going back to and that area you're going back to, man, there's a lot of people that, that, that died out there um, from, from war. 
and um, so many years ago back, and you're going back to that place. You know, what about what if this happens, and what if something takes place, and you're over there, and what about, and they tell you when you're there, don't, 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 when you're praying or you're, you're speaking, don't, don't be, you know, getting in the crowds and hugging people and doing all that stuff. Well, then, what am I doing? The point I'm trying to make is, by the time I, I you, if I would have just sat there and let that continue to become my focus, I would have never went overseas. If I don't go overseas, we don't have a church in India. We don't have, we, we're not doing what we're doing in India. We didn't have, last year, the services were 120, I forget how it was, 121, 128 Hindus gave their hearts to Jesus in three days of service. Oh, uh, you're not listening. We're not talking today if we don't go to Uganda and the relationship and following the instructions that God has given me. If I don't go over there, we're not building an orphanage in Uganda right now. But my instructions were from him. So my next step, so I had a boldness and a peace to go forward that God's telling me to go there. And what he's begun in my life, he's going to bring to completion. And my, listen, and my time on this earth and your time on this earth will be over when God says it's over. So I went overseas, prayed for the people in the crowds. Because that's what I felt God leading me to do under his anointing. And God protected me. If we are to allow the outside world to impact us, if that becomes our focus, we're going to become powerless, ineffective in the work that God's called us to do. In times like this, this is a time that the church needs to rise up. But it's hard to rise up if we're a roller coaster. It's hard to rise up if all we're doing is watching Fox News. I'm just saying, you know, it's real. Fox News is not the Bible. We need to get into the good news, the word of God, the one that died for us, the one that shed his blood for us, the one that gave us a hope and a future. The same God that did that for us is the same God that's going to see us through, bring us out, and we're going to finish strong for the glory of God. Amen. I, so I just, I just think, I never go overseas. I never do any of those things. If I allow that to become my focus, and that's what I'm meditating on, then fear comes in, and then I never take a step. I never get on a plane. I never go overseas. I never do any of these things. But this is the hour for the church to be the light, to be the solution. What I'm trying to say, I'm going to say this real quick. I want to insert this. If you're where you're supposed, listen to me carefully. I want to set somebody free from fear. If you're right with God, perfect love casts out all fear. If you're right with God and you're where you're supposed to be doing what God called you to do, your assignment, your life, will not prematurely be eliminated until God says your assignment's over. Until you're finished. Until he comes back or our time is up and we're with him forever. What happens is when we're out of position, when we're not right with God or we're outside the covering of God, sometimes assignments or purpose in people's lives come to an end prematurely because we made a choice to disobey God and put ourselves in position to allow things to take us out. In other words, when you're doing, if, if anyone has, been, has had an addiction, God touches you. God heals you, right? But if you go back and put a needle back in your arm, that's not God's will for your life. God pulled you out. 
And then you hear the tragedy of overdose. And sometimes you might say, well, that, maybe God took him. No, no. That was premature because someone took themselves out of position and went back into some stuff and made a choice. What I'm trying to say is the coronavirus is not going to have the final say in your life. If you're where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you can rest in that. You can have peace in that. And you can move forward with boldness for the glory of God. With wisdom. Could someone say amen? So watch this. Let me just. So, so watch this. Let me say this. What you feel, you might want to write this down. What you fill your mind with, watch this, this is good. If nothing else, just get this. What you fill your mind with becomes prophetic in your life. See, when you're teaching, that's how you do it. You say it a couple times, you stop for a moment. And you say it one more time, that's teaching, amen. amen. What you fill your mind with becomes prophetic in your life. So whatever I'm filling my mind with becomes my destiny. It's prophetic of where I'm going to be in the future. That's why it's important to be around the right people. Because the wrong people will affect your thinking, and then your next step is a wrong step because you're around the wrong people that have affected you, that have influenced you, that have messed with your mind, and it becomes the next step. So you got to get the right people speaking the right things. If you're around people that are negative, if you're around people that are always full of fear, and it'll affect you. So then it'll jump on you and it'll dictate your next step. But if you're around people of faith, people are about the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and lost. When you're around people about, man, there's work to be done for Jesus. When you're around people that are like, praise the Lord, God has a plan, amen. Well, you get around people that are like, man, this is the greatest hour to be alive, praise the Lord. This is, this, is, this is the greatest hour to be alive as a Christian. What an opportunity God has given us in the midst of this season to be able to speak his word and bring hope to the hopeless and share the gospel like never before. This is what we're about, right? Isn't this what we pray for? Isn't this what we cry out for? And God says, here it is. You're not of this world. You're in it, but you're not of it. Now start acting like it. Show yes. Watch this one. Focus determines mastery. Focus determines mastery. Mm. Just go to, look at something and say, mm. The word of, you guys notice how my glasses, this is like a teaching thing, like you just, this is how they do it. They put it on like this and then they go like this. The Word of God, watch this, the Word of God is a language, here it is, it's a language of confession, declaration, and proclamation that expands our territory in the Holy Spirit. The Word of God is a language of begging, what? See, when you're in the Word, you, 
You get the revelation, the reminder of who you are in God. Okay, I'm trying to teach, but I'm trying to jump into preaching. We need to be reminded daily of who we are in God, what God has done for us, and the promises he has. And then, when we move forward, we're not begging the Lord for something. But as a child of God, whatever is his, is mine. Oh, Jesus. That'll, that's, that'll change things. That'll change your day. That'll change your walk. That'll change everything. When you get the understanding and you're reminded what is his is mine. I'm a child of God, redeemed, blood bought. I am blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. I'm on top and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. If God's for me, who can be against me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For God, I'm not saying, Lord, help me with this fear thing. No. See, it changes everything because that's what you're spending time in and meditating. That's your focus. So now your confession, your proclamation is this. For God, you have not given me a spirit of fear. That'll change. But you have given me power, love, and a sound mind. And Lord, thank you because I know perfect love, your love, casts out all fear. Fear cannot stay here in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Shall yes. Where are my soldiers at? Shout, I'm a child of God. God's given us his word for us to pick it up and then decree it and declare it and believe it. And when we get to that place, and that's where we get Proverbs 18, 21, death and life from the power of the tongue. What is your focus? Because that becomes your confession. That becomes, your focus becomes your belief system. Ooh, that's the, that was like a teaching moment right there. I just felt like a teacher right now again. <laughs> Whatever your focus is over and over becomes your belief system. I said this last night. I'm going to Are we all right? You got to come on. Back in the day, for all my ex hustlers and players. Oh, come on now. Where you at? All of a sudden, you're like, oh. I said ex hustlers, ex players. Back in the day, out on the street, there was a way of doing things. Unspoken code. So back in the day, if someone did you harm or took from you, you got to protect your name and your reputation so unwritten code is like well I just can't let that go because how am I going to be looked upon on the streets but see because that was the focus and that was your surrounding that was your belief system so off that belief system you would respond 
by getting back at that person. And in your mind, that was the right thing to do because that was your belief system. Because that was your focus and that's what you were surrounded by and that's what, that's what impacted your life and dictated your next step. But when God became your focus, the word clarifies right and wrong. And now, because you're being moved by heaven and who you are in God, someone wrongs you, instead of getting back at them, you pray for them. <laughs> but I can't pray for them if I'm not connected to him and that's not my fault. Because you can still be saved and still not forgive and pray and turn the other cheek. You have to have follow through. Because we got people praising the Lord and ready to blow up people outside. And usually that's a sign that your focus is a little bit off. Oh, God, I just. Are you with me? Are we good? Okay, let me. So watch this. The word of God is, is a language of confession, declaration, and proclamation that expands our territory in the Holy Spirit. We, I'm going to finish 10 minutes. We have no. We have grown up in the world system of perception, thinking, and language. Religion calls us a sinner and focuses on the old man. How many people realize this isn't a religious thing? This is a relationship thing. It's a big difference. God calls us a saint and focuses on the new man, transforming our thinking about who we are in Christ. When we connect with Christ, we come under a mindset from a completely different realm. Mindset from religion is drawn from the world. Mindset drawn from Christ is drawn from heaven. Because Jesus came with heaven's mindset to teach us how to think properly and teach us the language of heaven here on earth. God, I just want to preach on every line right there. Jesus came saying, you have heard it said, but now I say, Jesus said, You've heard, you have heard it said, but now I say, but that's not, it's not finished. You have heard it said, now I say, so we can say. There it is. There's a and it's all comes from the foundation of being in the word. Knowing the word. That I'm forgiven. That I'm washed by his blood. That God has a plan for my life. And when the enemy tries to remind me of my past, God's word tells me all things work together for the good. For, see, all things work together for the good for, the, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. When I got that in me, when the enemy tries to bring me back to the past, then I could turn around and say, no, all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all my liabilities now are assets in the hands of God to bring hope. My miracle. See, now you, it changes your day. It changes your walk. It changes everything. Where the enemy tries to bring you down, tries to bring guilt, tries to bring shame again, you are able to walk forward and say, praise the Lord. My miracle is for somebody else's miracle. My my breakthroughs for somebody else's breakthrough. My turnaround is for somebody else's turnaround. I matter. I'm important. I'm not an accident. I'm loved. He's crazy about me. Oh, it changes everything. Look at someone say, He's crazy about me. You could say whatever you want. All I need to know is that He's crazy about me. I know my wife's crazy about me too. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi, baby. Did you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, 
Let me finish. So, what, so when, you're, when we're, we got to put in the time, and not put in time because we have to, because we want to. But we lose our victories because we let other things take, get in the way after we gain the victory. You don't pull back after you get a victory in the things of God. You don't pull back from coming to church. You don't pull back from praying. You don't pull back from worship. You don't pull back from serving God. After you get a victory, the way you protect your victory, you take it up another notch. You got to protect it. And you protect it by being in his word and renewing your mind every day or eventually you'll lose the fire you'll lose the passion you'll lose the hunger you'll lose the focus but when we're meditating on his word and we're renewing our minds daily we become like i said last night we become like like german shepherds back in the day in chicago before they had alarm systems and all this all this this, this stuff now back in that day the alarm system the security back in the used car lots back there in our neighborhood when it was time to close they lock everything up they let out two german shepherds and that was security that's how it was and you can be walking down the street i'm telling you i experienced you can be walking down the street across the street and even if you look in the direction of the car lot those german shepherds get to the fence and let you know don't even think about it and God is saying, I've called you to be in the spirit a German shepherd. Amen. And the way you become a German shepherd and you have a roar in your in your the way you get your R when the enemy tries to come, you're able to say, Oh, don't even think about it. And you can't have that without renewing your mind daily. Okay, let me say that. Romans, let me read. Romans, Jesus, let me say. Jesus came to teach us how to think, see, speak, and walk, and act with how heaven would. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Finally, 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 brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard of me or seen in me put into practice and the God of peace will be with you Amen. watch it Psalm 119 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path Psalm 37 23 the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and he delights in his way that's it that's it look at some say that's it I just got this word right now. As I was saying earlier, our time's not up here until God says. That's where our, he, he's the author and finisher of our faith. When, when Jesus started his ministry, after he preached and he said, and he opened up the book to Isaiah, and he said, on this day it's fulfilled. You know what they tried to do? They tried to throw him off. They tried to kill him. And the Bible says he walked right through. And no one touched him. I just got this. Their intentions were to kill him and throw him off the cliff. And the Bible says he passed right through them and no one touched him. You know why? Because his assignment wasn't over. Look at somebody say, can't touch this. See right now, that was in me and it just rolls up in me and I was reminded and it encouraged me to keep pushing forward. Yeah. God's got me. God's got me covered. God has my back. I just need to be about his business. And if I take care of his business, he'll take care of my business. If I take care of his house, he'll take care of my house. Okay, watch this. So I've, let me read this. 
I'm going to finish with this. I read this last night. Be, I, it's worth repeating. So this is a, a letter, and I finish with this. I finish with this. I got, I got this letter from prison, and it was an inmate that w- wrote me a, a whole letter letting me know how um, blessed and to, to thank us for sending um, CDs and things like that, how encouraging and how um, where he was and how he's doing now and serving God. Real positive, really encouraging. And then he wrote a poem. So I get the next paper and it's a poem. So I start to read the poem. Watch this. And the poem goes like this. I'm, I'm very ugly. So don't try to convince me that I am a very beautiful person. Because at the end of the day, I hate myself in every single way. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying there is beauty inside of me that matters. So rest assured, I will remind myself that I am worthless, terrible person. And nothing you say will make me believe I still deserve love. Because no matter what, I'm not good enough to be loved. And I'm in no position to believe that beauty does exist within me. Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always think, am I as ugly as people say? I'm like, what? Now, okay, now maybe I didn't, I didn't go like that the first time I read it. But I thought to myself, what is this? This is after I read this encouraging letter of what God was doing in his life, and I'm reading this poem, I'm like, what is that? That's depressing. That's hopeless, right? And what happened was, there was one more line a little further down, and it says, now read from the bottom up. And I didn't see that at first. I just read it, and I stopped. I'm like, what in the world? No, don't be reading it. Don't read it from the bottom up, or because we flipped it. Don't, don't, be, don't, don't, don't read it yet. I'm going to read it. I'm, bring, yeah, I'm, I, I'm the teacher. Yeah, don't, I'm bringing this thing home. This is the final. This is the. Uh, this is something if we can just grab onto this and remember this daily. Because this, if you can get this in your spirit and grab onto this, this could be the trigger that reminds you every day, I need to get in the word. I need to renew my mind daily okay so i read a little further and i'm like oh there's one more line i'm like what does this say and it says read from the bottom up at first i'm like this is hopeless this is negative and then i'm like read from the bottom up a few seconds later so when i read it from the top to bottom horrible negative hopeless now i'm going to read it from the bottom up am i as ugly as people say Because whenever I look in the mirror, I always think beauty does exist within me. And I am in no position to believe that I'm not good enough to be loved. Because no matter what, I still deserve love. And nothing you say will make me believe that I am worthless, terrible person. So rest assured, I will remind myself there is beauty inside of me that matters. And I'm not going to lie to myself by saying I hate myself in every single way because at the end of the day, I am a very beautiful person. So don't try to convince me that I'm very ugly. You keep your victory by daily getting heaven in your heart. His word. When the word is not dictating our next step, we're reading life from the top to bottom. Oh, Jesus. But when we have the word and we know who we are in Christ... And how much he loves us and what he's done for us and what he has in store for us and what, and what this is all about. And that we matter, that there's a, we're on assignment and there's work to be done and God has us covered. Actually, you know what God's saying right now? Man, when, you, when you're about my assignment, I've given you a passing through anointing. There's some stuff God says you don't even realize that have tried to come against you, but because you're about my kingdom and you're focused on me, there's some things and some enemies and stuff 
that you did not even realize around you because I took care of it because you had a passing through anointing that it didn't even affect you because you were so focused on the kingdom. And when we're in the word and we're renewing our minds, we look at things from the bottom up in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Oh, I put a little weight on. I can't close my jacket. I got to I just, just, just said, look at that. You know what that is? That's marriage. I just want to, as the worship team comes, are you glad you came this morning? Watch this. I just want to, 12, 18, okay. What, I just want to say, you know, I was thinking like what, 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 what's his, God has given us. If we believe it and receive it and proclaim it because our words create our future. Our focus is our destination. I was just thinking, my little one. It, 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 she can do everything wrong. And what's mine is still hers. Now, there's correction in the process, but still what is mine, what's mine, meaning Sheila's, but as a father, what's mine is all hers. Now, I might hold back some stuff because she's not ready for some stuff. Oh, God. But it doesn't change what's mine is hers, and I want the best for her. Now, in the process of it, if she's not listening, we're going to try to bring correction to get her going in the right direction. But what's mine continues to be hers, though. Now, some of it is being held back because she's not ready for it. What I'm trying to say is what's his is yours. Be where God's called you to be. And what God has for you for your assignment will manifest in God's timing for your life. Right now, we're putting money away for her future. She's not, we're not going to give her money. At, she's going to be two years old or even when she turns eight and go, here, here's a couple thousand dollars, Gracie. Without her realizing, we're already saving for her future to help her when she gets at a certain age so she can be successful with what God's put in her heart. And we're going to help her move in that direction. Amen? I felt that was a word for somebody right now, prophetically. What God has for you and what's his is yours. And your, the delay of what you're praying for is not a denial it's not God's timing yet. So when you get to a certain place and stay in position, you'll be able to handle what he has for you. My wife, in conclusion, I did I say that's like three conclusions. Well, you know what? I haven't had a, anybody to speak to in a long time. Are you all right? Are we good? Just for a minute. So she shared... Her testimony many times and one in particular time she said when she was here I didn't even know her at this time she was in the corner back there and I was out here and she was pressing in and she was going through a lot she had dealt with um, 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 four deaths um, three months in three months four deaths her mom went to go to be with the Lord friend suicide then her fiance and her little bird in three months now she's in recover 10 years sober no no wait. back then not now now she's over 15. Ah. <laughs> amen i love you praise the lord that's awesome i feel so good to have some yeah. oh, praise the lord. so i so she was going to run from god as she said and she probably would have been locked up somewhere 
or she was going to run to God. Okay. So she was pressing in, trying to, st- you know, she's, she's been sober for 10 years. All this has taken place now. And I'm in the church and I'm preaching and I'm, and I'm, and I'm doing, and I started to call out things. And one was suicide, the spirit of suicide, that God's delivering people from suicide right now. And no one was at the altar and I just pointed it in that direction. Which way? Real quick. Come on. Come on. What did I, what did I, come on real quick. So I was actually right there by that pole and I was standing there and actually he had told everybody to get as close to the altar as he could, but nobody lay hands on anybody. And I remember feeling some, like a hand or something on my back and I was like, and I was so in the spirit, I'm crying, trembling, shaking, the power of God's over me. And I'm thinking, pastor said nobody lay hands on anybody. I'm like, well, maybe it's an angel. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to stay focused. So I'm praising God I'm worshiping. And all of a sudden, and my eyes are closed. He's like, I bind that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. See, I and I, I was, literally, I, I and, he, I and he went direction. this way and he was standing right up here. And I remember feeling it go and it lifting off of me. And I felt that three times, not in me, right? Just off of me, something that was trying to oppress me. And I felt it lift off. And I felt that three times and twice was here. And so it's like, I, and I'm, I'm sober, right? I'm not high. I'm not drunk. I'm not tripping. I'm like, this is greater than anything I've ever done. This is amazing, right? This is the supernatural power of God. This is awesome. I wish, you know, so I'm, yeah. Okay. There's a baby. Hi, baby. We love babies. Is that a baby? Hi, baby. Say hi, baby. <laughs> so, um, so then he prayed and I, you know, I went back, you know, God does something miraculous and radical and we're like, that's amazing. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. I have to see if he's pointing my direction. So I went home and I waited for it to come up on YouTube. I watched it back and sure enough, he's standing up here and he's like, I bind that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. And he pointed in my direction, didn't know him, didn't know me, nothing. And just, it completely left. And after that, such, see that spirit, I didn't realize it's so sneaky. I didn't realize that spirit was trying to come back because one of the deaths was suicide. And I didn't realize that it was trying to come back and take me out. And it's really subtle at first. But anyway, so God showed up and boom. So this is real. Okay, now watch this. Now she wants to see the baby. So what? So the point, and I knew, I, I knew, I, okay, so there's a lot of altar calls. So, so, okay, so some people were up here. Okay, praise the Lord. I was just off a little bit, amen? But I did point in that direction. Okay, so clarifying all that. Okay, the point I'm trying to make is, I said earlier, you come, she was pressing in, and she got her breakthrough. Now watch this. But she stands here today, years later, because she followed through. And what do I mean? By, I see it firsthand. Her focus at home is the Word of God. The TV is on TBN. Um, Joyce Meyer. She's listening to Joyce Meyer when she's in the in, you know getting ready. She's got the the phone and it's worship music and or it's a teaching and um it's and when i say this it's non-stop and because she's had follow-through she's kept that door shut with her follow-through by renewing her mind daily and she's protected what happened some five years ago in jesus name amen look at somebody say you can do it in jesus name let's stand to our feet amen Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for today. Thank you. Just lift up your hand and say, I'll receive it. In Jesus' name. If you're in this place today or watching at home, your altar's right where you're at. Your miracle starts, your break, all of it starts, your greatest miracle of all is salvation. The Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Great champions aren't defined by the way they start something. They're defined by the way they finish something. It's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. You're alive. You're breathing, which means there's time to get back up and finish strong. Learn from it. Grow from it. And move forward. And believe that God is so good and loves you so much that, yes, he wants to forgive you as far as the east is from the west. And some of you saying, man, you don't know my resume and how much and how long and how dark. I'm here to tell you God is not 
intimidated with your sins. He died for every one of your sins. And today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if that's you in this place, it's not too late. He loves you. Maybe you've been away from the things of God, like the prodigal son, as we're doing in life groups on Wednesday nights. For my prodigal sons and daughters, God is saying, come back home. It's not too late. You will have time to get it right. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Well, it's been the third time. Well, good. That's going to be part of your testimony to help somebody else that's been down three times. And when the enemy comes and says, oh, you're not, you're not worthy, and look at what you've done, and you knew better. If you're in the Word and you know who you are in God, He's forgiven you, He loves you, and He's going to take your liabilities and use them as assets. Start walking in it and be the champion that God's called you to be. Let's be great together. What an hour, what a moment in history that we have right now. Let's do it, amen. If that's you right now, you say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to pray for me. I want to get right with God. I want to come back to the Lord. I, that's me. On the count of three, just lift up your hands. And watch it at home. Your altar is right where you're at. One, two, three, lift them up. Thank you. 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 All over. This is awesome. God, I love this church. Quickly, just for the next few minutes, decency and in order. As a step of faith, as we did last night, man, there's something about the altar. If that's you right now, just for the next few minutes, just five more minutes, please. This is the greatest miracle of all. This is what it's all about. This is why we do what we do. Everyone that lifted up their hands, I just want you to step out of your seat and make your way up here and just stand in front of me real quick. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. This is awesome. Woo! Hallelujah. Just find a seat. Anybody else over here? shall be saved for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life it's not too late this is your day and when we leave this altar and we leave church for all of us follow through that's the word follow through get involved get plugged into church faith comes by hearing by hearing the word of God but at home spend time in the word when you when you're not working and, and you're at home Get to church. Get to get to prayer meeting. Get get to life groups. As we as, as, as we have these these studies, study the word. Get to church. Get around the right people and watch what God will do. Watch what God will do. Not just to save you, to forgive you, but He wants to use you to impact somebody else, to impact the world around you. You matter. He loves you. And it's not too late. So let's pray this prayer and watch it at home. 
your altar is right where you're at bible says the man looks at the outer appearance but god looks at the heart he sees your heart i want us all to pray this prayer together heavenly father i need you i'm a sinner and i need a savior i believe you sent your son jesus to this earth for me and those who call upon his name shall be saved jesus help me wash me with your blood renew a right spirit within me i ask you to come into my heart and be lord and savior of my life from this day forth i'm all yours i'm surrendered to you use me for your glory i believe today because your word says it i believed it and confessed it that i am saved i'm on my way to heaven and my greatest days are ahead in jesus name amen lift up your hands lift up your hands and right now in the name of jesus fill your people you said blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled I pray right now and watching at home, chains of addiction to break, fear to go, heaviness to go, depression to go in the name of Jesus. Touch your people from the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes, physically and spiritually in the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray and decree breakthrough over your people. Breakthrough. A breakthrough and a break out into greatness for your glory in the name of Jesus. Greater fire, greater hunger, greater passion, greater desire to reach your people, to reach the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and the lost, and a greater appetite to be in your word, to spend time with you for your glory. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, and everyone said, and everyone said, hallelujah, we'll see you later.